Hello everyone, welcome to the Political Party's recap for Hogger History, prepping you for the test one more time, recorded in between classes, so a fourth extra time teaching this today. Let's go through with it right quick and not waste any time. What is a political party? According to our textbook, a group of people who seek to control government through the winning of elections and the holding of public office with our two major parties in the United States being the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. They're essentially a link to the democratic government to the people. Some argue that they're the primary method by which we communicate what we want out of government. Others disagree and blame them for division and bickering. Your political survey that we took out of the textbook from TCI talks about family, economic status, occupation, major events in your life, religion, and age, all playing a part into who you may vote for and which party you may find yourself more aligned with. Your career might also play a big role according to some national polls of different career options, which find that career choices like taxi driver, for example, tend to be Democratic, while truck drivers tend to be Republican, and so on through many aspects of life and many industries. Some of that might have to do with special interests or their own desires or agendas for their careers to be advanced or for their industries, or it might be a history of which presidents have supported their industries more in the past or the values of which they hold. So we took a survey and you found yourself aligned possibly to one party or the other. We looked at some of the recent presidents from each party, including Carter, Clinton, and Obama on the left for the Democrats, and Bush, Bush, and Trump for the Republicans, and talked about the idealization of presidents, like Republican Ronald Reagan being one of the strong presidents from their past, and FDR being one of the strong presidents from the Democrats' past. Then we also looked at some of the recent campaign speeches to see if we could pick up values by looking at random minutes from each speech to see what we could observe, which was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that a lot, and I think that was a good way to do it without choosing moments myself for you to look at. Then you took your turn writing your own speech. We stopped for the day and looked at some of the election paths as they were coming in. And then we talked about the five major functions of political parties, including picking a candidate being the most important thing. No other group in the political process chooses the person who's running. Feel free to pause along the way for anything you need to see more of. But candidates represent party members and help spread the party's message. They inform and activate supporters for what they want them to be informed on. Sometimes this is advertising, sometimes emails, conventions, caucuses, meetings, town halls, or social media even. The third function is to unite government and bring people together so that you're organized on large political decisions or campaign promises or feelings on different issues like the environment or business or the economy or education so that people in different areas of the country are united by, by their beliefs and philosophies and banded together to perform well when in office and help keep each other strong and strengthened. The example we looked at was President Trump. Wherever he campaigned over the past week, he bolstered up whoever was the governor there or the senator or the representative, and they shared and kind of used co-chemistry to boost each other up and help each other get reelected or elected for the first time. And in that function, they're influencing policy and government. They're acting based on their firm allegiance to their party in many instances and to make sure that they can influence the policies and the laws that are made at the local, state, and federal level. And whoever is not in power serves as a watchdog. They closely watch the actions of the party in power. They will pay close attention and try to convince the voters that they should be in charge because they would do a better job. And then today we're talking about where the two iconic animals came from and Thomas Nast the Harper's Weekly Animator for Cartoons cast this gem that painted the Republicans as strong. And then in 1928, Andrew Jackson was drawn as a jackass. Get Jackson, jackass. And Jackson actually liked it and endorsed it. And then later on, other representations by Thomas Ness became popular. We looked at the four independent parties that are spread along the United States, including the American Independent Party, and some of the beliefs from each with the Independent Party wanting to uh, capitalize on ending illegal immigration, balancing state budgets, and alleviating repairs like levees and state water problems in California as a local example, and have about 311,000 members. The Green Party putting the environment on top of their list of objectives, but also mentioning that keeping big money out of politics, grassroots democracy, clean energy and clean water, and election reform, along with a living wage and health care for all. 
The Libertarian Party wanting there to be as small government as possible, not being told how to run your life, checkbook education, or family, and deciding how to reduce taxes and keep more of what you earn with about 83,000 members in California. And we mentioned Joe Jorgensen in the 2020 election polling close to 1% in many different states on the popular vote. And in some states being more than the difference between Vice President Biden and President Trump. And then we mentioned the Peace and Freedom Party, whose main goal is to bring home all troops, double the minimum wage, and make sure there is health care and education for all. Then we talked about uh, the generalities for the Republican Party and Democratic Party. Again, these are just generalities. Not every person fits into the perfect mold of exactly the same philosophies. But generally speaking, Republicans are in favor of free market capitalism, believing taxes should not be raised for anyone, and they should be flat, conservative on social issues and traditional values, while Democrats are typically in favor of supporting social welfare programs, food stamps, Medicare, uh, temporary assistance for needy families, unemployment benefit extensions, and believe the government should regulate the economy to protect workers, minimum wage, the environment, progressive taxation, and are more liberal on social issues. We looked at some cases of red versus blue in pop culture and then talked about who is more likely in many segments of California to be in different careers and where they might vote, knowing that not everybody fits in every category. And that's where we ended. I did all that very quickly. We also watched a video from Jill Stein in which she talked about some of the Green Party's motivations and then Gary Johnson's libertarian motivations for the 2016 election. And that's it. So I hope that was a helpful walk through memory lane. We did a great job, I think, looking at everything. We had great discussions. I really enjoy how much everybody's listening and getting along and just pointing out, making observations and not judgments, which is what we wanted from the very start in my class. So thanks, everybody. Really enjoying the year. And we'll see you on Tuesday. Yeah, everyone's got class on Tuesday for, for the test. And I'll talk to you later. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being so amazing and keeping open eyes and open ears and being kind to each other. We'll talk to you next class. Bye.